Welcome to a new video. So you've decided to do your PhD abroad. Nice decision. But now you're probably overwhelmed by all the different possibilities that you have. So there are a lot of countries in the world. And then these countries have a lot of universities. And you might just get lost. As I did when I decided to do my PhD abroad. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to break down how a PhD is built in Germany versus in the UK versus in the US. We're going to cover all topics from how the PhD program is designed, yeah, the cost, the application process, the duration and the entry requirements. And then I'm going to tell you why I decided to do my PhD in the UK. Stay tuned and let's get started. I'm going to start off with one of the most important things, which is basically the PhD program. So what is it like to do a PhD in Germany, in the UK, in the US? How do they differ from one another? And I'm going to start with Germany. So if you decide to do your PhD in Germany, you won't be a PhD student. It's more like being a postdoc in Germany. So what happens is, um, you'll probably prepare lectures or you might even give lectures to students. You, you're going to mark exams and prepare students for exams and you'll be there for their answers. Probably there is a lot of postdoc work going into this. And um, the upside of this is that you'll get paid for that. So all the work that you're doing alongside your PhD in the department is going to cover your living costs. And this is a very cool system, actually, because you don't have to worry about that. The downside, of course, is that you can't focus 100% on your research and that you're busy, you know, teaching, marking and creating exams and all that kind of thing. So now I'm going to move on to the PhD program in the US. So most PhD programs in the US, they're built like a coursework. So you're literally a PhD student. Um, in the US, people start their PhD after their undergraduate degree. So what you're going to do is you're going to take courses for two years and then you're going to have to pass an entry exam. And then after these two years, you can then focus 100% on your research. So for the first two years, you're going to do research alongside your coursework, but you're not going to do 100% research only. So it'll always be accompanied by lectures, exams and all that kind of things, right? It's a bit more study based. And in the UK, basically, that's what I'm doing right now. Um, it's like this. So you're a PhD student. I'm a PhD student. A PhD student means I'm fully focusing on research only. From day one, my only job was to get my PhD going, was to do research. I don't have to take any courses, lectures, write exams or anything like that. And I do also, um, I'm not obliged to cheat or mark exams or do any of that. Um, I can if I want to, but then I get paid for it. That being said, I'm going to summarize it. Germany, it's similar to a postdoc. US, it's very studying-ish. So it's after your undergraduate degree and you're going to take courses, exams and all that kind of things. And the research part comes later on in the journey. And UK, it's research only, no teaching, no nothing. But you can if you want to and if you want to earn some extra money. Let's come over to the entry requirements because this is something that really surprised me and I didn't know that. So I was born and raised in Germany and I did my whole bachelor and master degree in Germany. And when the first time I went abroad, I realized, okay, wow, like in the US, for example, people do their undergrad and then they move over to their PhD directly. So if, you, if we translate it to the German system, this would mean doing a bachelor degree and then moving on to the PhD afterwards. And the reason why this works is because it's so it's still very course-based. So the things that you learn in your master degree, you learn that during your PhD degree within the first two years when you take all that courses and when you take all the exams, right? So basically you're doing your master alongside your PhD. Ultimately, this means that if you're from abroad and you got a bachelor degree, you, you will find universities in the US that will accept you just with your bachelor degree. But this really depends on the university policy and it even does... It actually depends on the departmental policy. So it might be that one university, for instance, let's say chemical engineering department would allow that, but like civil engineering department wouldn't allow that, right? But there is this possibility that you can literally start your PhD after your bachelor degree, which is great if you want to do your PhD anyways, then why do your master's and then the PhD? Just go ahead with that system. 
you'll learn it anyways, you know, all the things that you're going to learn during your master degree. In the UK, it's kind of similar. So some universities, they require a master degree, but some don't. So even there, even in the UK where a PhD is only three to four years and you won't really have that much coursework, um, it is possible to start just with a bachelor degree, right? So, I mean, it's a shortcut. Why not? Why not consider it? In Germany, however, you have to have a master degree. So it literally, you have to do your bachelor's, your master's, and then you'll move on to the PhD degree, which makes sense because, as I said, a PhD in Germany involves a lot of uh, postdoc work as well. So you have to have like a certain level of knowledge and move then over to the research world where you then also have to teach, right? So you really need to have a good knowledge base to be able to create exams, mark exams, teach students and all that kind of thing. So that being said, we've covered PhD programs, we've covered um, entry requirements, and now we're going to cover the duration. So in the US, a PhD typically takes four to six years. It's going to take, I mean, five years is the average that I've heard from my friends in the US. But four to six years, we can say that. And the reason why it's taking six years, for instance, is because of the coursework, right? So let's say you started with your bachelor degree and then you did like two years of coursework. You did a little bit of research alongside, you know, as much as it suits your schedule. And then after these two years, you're going to start doing full time research for four more years or three more years. So it kind of adds up to the same length as if I'd be doing a PhD in Germany, doing like a three year bachelor's, two year master's and then three to four year PhD. But it's just doing a bachelor and then a longer PhD. That's the US system. In the uh, UK, a PhD takes three to four years and it's actually pretty cool because it literally takes three to four years. So people graduate after four years, most of the time. And in the in, in Germany, it's also like, I'd say three years is pretty fast. I'd say it's more regular four years and then four to six years, depending on what you're doing your research on. That being said, let's move on to the costs because that's where things change a bit. All right. So in the US, uh, what I heard at my time at Johns Hopkins University and talking to my US friends is that once you apply to a university and you got admitted, then most of the time your tuition and your living costs are being taken care of. So that means you're going to be automatically enrolled in a departmental scholarship program. So you don't have to worry about your tuition and you'll even get like a decent salary. In the UK, however, this is not a must, right? So what happened with me is, I mean, I can apply to Imperial College, get admitted to a PhD program, but then I still have to figure out how to cover my costs. So just being admitted to the college does not mean that my PhD is funded, which is the biggest problem to, in my opinion, to apply for the UK. Because tuition fees, what I mean by that, as an international student in the UK, you have to pay £27,500 per year in tuition only. It's a lot. So what you can do is, we'll talk about that in another video, like how, to, how I managed to cover my costs and what methods there are to get a bursary or a stipend, but you definitely have to ca take care for that on your own. And now this is probably the best part of Germany, of doing a PhD in Germany is, or actually this is the best part of studying in Germany in general, is that education is free. So you don't have to pay tuition fees in Germany. I mean, the largest amount of money you'd probably have to pay if you're still enrolled as a student is a 300 euro per term, which means 300 euros per six month, which is which basically just covers like administrative stuff and tube tickets or something like that you know the student benefits bonuses and, and stuff like that but as a PhD student since you're not a student you're a staff you're a member of the department of staff literally you you probably don't even have student status so you shouldn't be paying that either it's free no tuition fees you don't have to worry about that at all the only thing you have to take care of is your living costs which are usually covered by your work at the department 
So by teaching students, by giving the coursework and marking exams and stuff, you're going to cover that as well. So it's super easy. It's so straightforward. It's amazing. So now we're going to talk about the last thing, which is the application process. So uh, in the US and in the UK, it's kind of similar, right? So you have to apply at the department. So in my case, I applied at the Department of Chemical Engineering. So each department has its own application process, its own entry requirements. So you apply at the department and then you have to go through a departmental application process. So you'll have the application committee and you'll be interviewed by um, different professors and people from the committee. And then once you've passed all this, you can decide on the professor that you want to join the group. And basically the professor most of the time has not the right to just admit you to the university just by his or her own will. So you literally have to go through the departmental application process. While, whereas, and this is also a great thing about Germany, in my opinion, because you apply in Germany the same way as you'd apply for a normal job. So you go to the professor's research group and then you apply directly at the professor. And this professor has also the right to just admit you to his or her group because I'm saying it again, you're a member of staff, you're not a student. So he's literally employing another staff member there and he's obliged or he's entitled to do that by his or her own will. And you don't have to go through an application process and you don't have to submit references and you don't have to submit a letter of motivation or anything. You just have to come with your CV and with, you know, the thing you write in your applications, like the cover letter, and then you'll have an interview. And if that goes well, yeah! happy you. You, got your, you got your place. Summing it all up, one might assume, Einur, you've been born and raised in Germany, right? And you're saying education is free in Germany. Why, like why on earth would you decide to go to the UK to pursue your PhD, where you have to organize your own funding? where you have to go through a complicated application process, while you could have it all so easy in Germany, get paid for your PhD, and don't worry about all that. That's a very good question. The reason why I decided to go to the UK is, first of all, I really wanted to study abroad. Like that was the number one thing. So Germany was not even an option because oh, if, if you decide to go abroad, then you're gonna learn a whole new skill set of things alongside your PhD. So you're gonna learn how to become a researcher and do science and all that. But on the other hand, you're literally learning how to move your life from one country to another country. You're gonna learn a new language, a new culture. You're gonna have new friends, a new environment. And this is gonna literally boost your personality and teach you so much more than just a PhD in your home country would do. So Germany was out of the list because it was my home country. So I didn't want to do that there. And then with the US, I had a problem with the duration. So I didn't apply to a single university in the US because guys, I was done taking exams. I was done. All right, okay, 24 years of my life I took exams. Like from primary school up to bachelor's, master's, I'm done. Like the day I wrote my last master exam, that was the day I celebrated and I was like, this is gonna be the final exam of my life. Okay, done. And then I wanted it to be an English speaking country and most English speaking countries, they go with the US system. So basically there wasn't much left beside the UK in the end, you know? And the UK obviously has great universities, one of the world's leading universities. And I am honored still and very excited to be at Imperial College London. Considering all this, I decided to go for the hard way and it kind of worked out, which basically means that if you want something, go get it and you'll get it. That being said, I'm going to end this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel because you're going to get premium content on this account. I promise I'm going to give my best to provide you with valuable insights from academia. And also, if you want to be updated more frequently on a daily basis, follow my Instagram channel. I'm going to link it in the info box because there you're going to get daily updates from my life as a researcher, from my life as a PhD student, from my life in London. And don't, don't miss out on this. Follow me on Instagram and on YouTube. Other than that, enjoy your day. Bye-bye.